So Friday was a nice day for everyone else. New all-time highs in the markets. Some stocks making crazy gains. I mean, you look at some of these stocks, Microsoft, uh, you know, the usual suspects, Apple, NVIDIA. Thank God I closed my short on that one. I mean, and then you just look at the miners and it's just, I mean, we've been there before kind of, but this is starting to get to an extreme and the sentiment is maybe the worst ever because you've got gold all the way up at 2000 and then the miners in the dustbin and everyone else is doing crazy. But it's funny how the market has a way of shaking everyone out of their position on oh, not everyone, but it really has a way of just really getting to everyone's deepest um, psychological weakness, let's say. With that said, uh, let's look at the DXY. So, you know, usual DXY, then yields, then gold, silver, miners, and then the actual portfolio. So starting with DXY, this little descending, which I didn't catch on to initially, looks like it's working. So first of all, DXY close at the of day, very nice. Maybe we're going to go back and test breakout. And, you know, maybe this becomes a lower high. And then down we go here, some sideways, and then down we go there. And then that's the best case scenario for the miners, you know, those that hold miners. It just becomes a lower high, but like over here. But for now, this is holding, you know, I do think we're going to go down and test breakout. I don't think that's too much to ask for, 102.6 roughly. Yeah. Otherwise, if we just hold, I think there will be a bit of a drop in on Monday because that's a closer low of day. But who knows, if it starts to go sideways and close above, then you're going to have to start looking at this level here, 104.3-ish that I was looking at before. So, you know, it can go either way. But for now, I think there has to be a bit of a drop initially. So let's let's see. But it looks good for at least a move down. Therefore, I think 102.6. And if it keeps going, then it'll be below these sort of tails here. So 102. There you go. That's the DXY. Let's look at yields. Now, yields, the, the one year looks okay. Breakout of the descending wants to go a bit higher. The two year... Looks okay. Bit of resistance, maybe. You started to see some 4.4-ish resistance. Let's look at five year. Also had its horizontal resistance. That looked that worked quite well. Closed, you know, where it opened, so gave up a lot of its gains. That's nice to see. This 10 year closed at low of day. I don't really see the resistance here, but it's probably just they're all working off each other, you know. So overall, it had to go down because the others were going down. In the third year. Maybe this horizontal resistance is working again as it did before. So our yields had a bit of a resistance. Yeah, a little bit. You know, nothing crazy, but a little bit. And so is the DXY. So I would say DXY and yields have encountered resistance and they're probably due for a little more retracement, which is nice, right? That helps the metals and the miners, at least for one or two days, Monday, Tuesday. Let's see. Def I'm going to say definitely Monday. There should be a bit of a drop. Okay, with that said, let's look at gold and silver. And gold's actually not done that bad. I mean, we had this drop. We tested basically 2,000. We closed above it after losing this ascending. And then we bounced back up very well. We gave up a bit. I mean, we didn't close the high of day, but still another green day on Friday, closing around 2030. Back in the ascending, it doesn't mean too much, especially when it's only just... But, you know, we're at 2030. We were trading at 2030 before for the whole last two weeks. So, you know, if you went on holiday for the last four or five days, you'd say, yeah, whatever, we're at 2030, nothing's changed. But you've missed this drop and you definitely missed a massive overreaction in the miners, which we'll get to in a second. So the point is gold, technically, I'm going to keep this ascending in there. I don't think it counts too much. But, you know, we held 2,000 and we're trading where we were before. That's actually all I'm going to say about gold. Let's look at silver. <clears throat> silver also holding its horizontal lows. So wasn't, you know, wasn't actually that strong on Friday. It was actually red whilst gold was green. So that's a bit of a strange anomaly. You don't usually see silver <clears throat> red when gold is, uh, gold is green. So a bit of weakness relative to gold, but... I mean, wait till you see the miners. So, but you know, we're holding the lows. Let's say we're holding this 22.5-ish range, this low. So that's definitely a level to watch. You don't want to close below 22.5. Otherwise, down we go. And I think these levels are accurate. So we need gold to keep marching higher. We need silver to start outperforming again. And then maybe we can start testing this upper range here. I think the nearest resistance, by the way, on silver is 20, 23.5. And at the moment, we've got 22.5. So... I don't actually see 23 as a level. And for silver, that's quite 
unique because normally it's one unit increments, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. But actually right now, because of what's happened, this choppiness, 23 for me, I see nothing. So we're stuck between 22.5 and 23. 0.5 on the upside, I forgot to mention gold. It looks like we're quite far away from that, but actually we're not. We're probably one, maybe two days away from that. 2060, otherwise, let's just say 2080, uh, roughly, right? 2070, 2080. But there, I see a little bit of resistance here, just in case we do start to go up. If we do start to go up, that's going to look very bullish all of a sudden. And I'd expect the miners to seriously outperform and do some catch up because, because they flushed a lot, as we will see soon um actually let's just check that out now gdxj look we are definitely holding a bit of a level so at least we have some identifiable support 33.5 on gdxj you see these three hammers here's the highest close so it's looking more and more bullish to be honest with the way the dxy and the yields closed i'd expect monday we fill the gap we fill the gap we've come down a bit too much and i think <clears throat> Even if there's no crazy action, I just expect GDXJ to fill this gap. So I expect resistance here, 34.6-ish. If we keep going up, I'd expect resistance before this gap, 35.7. If we keep going, we close the gap. Let's just say 36. And if we keep going over here, 37. I don't really want to draw more lines, but you know, just to add graphics to what I said. That's GDXJ on the way down, by the way, in case we start to flush, I don't see that happening. I do see this level here. Okay, 32.6. This basically this low, it could actually be here. 30. Yeah, the low of this candle. And then to be honest, I see nothing until the absolute lows. I don't think we're going to go all the way down there. And if we do close below this 32.5, I don't see us the next day going that down there, but it would start to make its way down to the absolute lows down here. So that's GDXJ. I don't see much difference between GDXJ and GDX. Look, it's the same thing, you know, <clears throat> same sort of gap fills and also the highest close in GDX, just like GDXJ. So I do expect a gap fill. And same thing, you know, next level would be all the way up here. If we keep going, it'd be the actual gap fill. And if we keep going, and I don't see any of this happening in one or two or three days, I think it would take a week at least. Uh, and then we start to go test here, nice level here. And then the absolute highs, we're far from that. That's 2,100 gold at least, I would say, at this level because these are underperforming so much. On the way down, yep, the low here. And if we keep going, the absolute low down here. Obviously, there are more lows, but I mean, we've done so much, uh, so much of a descent that I just can't really fathom a continued descent. It's just at some point, something's oversold, so... Those are the levels I'm watching. Let's look at Sol J. <clears throat> Same sort of thing. Yes, we made a new low. That's interesting, actually. Um, so there it's a bit different, but it doesn't matter. It's still closed pretty high off its low. And I still think uh, we will move up to nine, above nine, actually. It's a little different, but not really that much. Probably 940. Because we know GDX and GDXJ's chart are like, they've got little gaps to, to fill. There'll probably be a stop off before the gap fill and after. So, and this is also a bit of a midpoint between this level here and the low down here. So those are the little mini levels on the way up. I think that makes sense. On the way down, yeah, there's this one here. And after that, there's the absolute low down here. So that's quickly. And if we do start to move all the way up here, which is not going to happen soon, will encounter sort of the descending resistance and uh, the highs of, let's say, 1050. So those are the levels. Uh, we're at the lows. I think we should bounce um, Monday, Tuesday. But um, let's look at the actual portfolio now. Newmont. Horrendous stuff, you know. It looks like a junior. I mean, this is just at its lows, you know. It's underperforming the... <laughs> The GDX, you know, GDX, when you zoom out, at least you've got more levels. This one, we're at the absolute lows. Now, Newmont's been underperforming for a while. It had a few days where it outperformed, but I remember, I forgot when it was. I think it was this candle here. In fact, I'm sure it was. This one here, this drop, this Tuesday, it dropped. And, you know, the GDX chart, the other miners were having a normal day. I mean, they weren't doing great. They were at their ascending lows also. But this really led the drop, I think. And then it was Barrett Gold that just really stole the show. But... Anyway, down we go. We're down pretty much at support. I mean, we are at support. 
because support is 34, right? It can trade below, but it'll probably close above. And this is a very nice candle here. This is the type of candle you want to buy for a pop, for a little bounce. <clears throat> and, you know, like I've said, looking at the DXY, the yields, the GDXs, we're probably due for a bounce. And I think Newmont, I don't know if it will find resistance at 35.2, but it's got so much to make up for. It's just, I wouldn't be selling anything here. I think there'll be a gap fill, 36, nice round number. I wouldn't count this as a level. I would just say, okay, here's your first level, which I'm not selling into. I've been nibbling, by the way. I've been nibbling, you know, the last couple of days, like Friday, Thursday, I think Wednesday I started nibbling. I don't know. I forgot which day I bought Newmont, but it's down here. I've been buying a few of them, but very small stuff, you know, like if if it continues down, I'm happy because I didn't buy much. If it goes up, at least I bought something. It's more of a psychological nibble because what if the market cascades lower and takes the miners with them? I mean, then we're really heavily dropped. Uh, the miners will just be crushed. I don't know if they'd be crushed. They'd probably be outperforming the markets, but still going down. And you need to have cash. You need to constantly have cash on the sidelines or you will just go crazy. Imagine being all in. And then you just, the only strategy you have left is to hope or to have stop loss and buy back what you stop out of lower. I don't know. You just always want cash. And that's one advantage to nibbling. You're kind of looking forward to the next day, no matter what happens. If it goes up, you're technically, technically in profit with what you bought. And if it goes down, well, you're happy you only nibbled and didn't take a decent position. So anyway, with that said, I think first resistance on the way up is 36. <clears throat> um, after that, yeah, 37. Nice and simple. After that, I feel like that's too far ahead in the future, but maybe there's a big move in gold, like 2100 or something, and then you can start looking at probably something like 41 or 40 at least up here, you know, where you're going to encounter the descending. So on the way down, I would say, okay, the absolute low of this candle, 33.5 roughly. And if you keep going, take out the COVID lows, then 30. Wow, that's a huge number and a definite level. So 30 is a line in the sand for Newman. I don't care if you're trading below 30, even if you're closing below 30. I'd expect it to go back up above 30. This is a big stop. You don't just take out a level like that and keep going down. Um, so 30 is a huge level. But remember, you have this COVID level here of 33. So, but it looks due for a bounce. Anyway, Barrett Gold, look at that drop. Unbelievable. Yeah, so down it goes. <clears throat> um, I think it had bad earnings, but I mean... That's that's an overreaction right there. You can see this level here. You can see it bounced there. There was this level. I think I had this line drawn in already. So that was quite nice. Ah, oh, yeah, over here, of course. I must have. So now we're due for a bounce. We will definitely gap fill. So 16 is easy. I actually I actually took a position in not not took a position, but I added to a barrack, but I did a bit of a fat finger error and I bought um 10 times I should have what I should have. And um so actually, this one I'm looking forward to is it was supposed to be a small nibble, but this one was actually a bit of a, a bit of an ad, let's say. <laughs> so I look forward to this one bouncing, and this one's actually outperforming the others, which makes sense because it massively underperformed with this candle. So let's just cover the the levels on the way down. So first of all, we've got fifteen point five roughly, then we've got fifteen. And if we keep going, we've got the lows down here of 14, right? 15.5, 15, 15, 14. If we keep going, we've got this strange move here, uh, 13. That No need to consider anything below that because, because it's not going to happen in one week. On the way up, gap fills straight away, 16. On the way up after that, um, I'd probably have to look at the GDX chart because the next level would be like this flush zone. So 17, big round number. That's nice. Otherwise, the retest of the ascending... Um, but even there, you're probably testing, you know, this level up here, 18. So big round numbers, really. 16, 17, 18. Yeah, simple. And on the way down, 15, 14, 13. Okay, that's just really easy. All right, Agnico Eagle, that one also similar sort of candles, right? Best candle out of the three, lower high match the high so obviously this is mini resistance but i think we take that out straight away on monday 
and the best candle close out of the three. So um, that's really hardly a gap. 50, big round number, technically filling the gap, uh, but that'll be very easy. And Ignico is stronger than New Mountain Barrack. If we keep going up after 50, we do have a bit of a gap here, but it doesn't matter too much. I don't know, maybe 51.7, just before the gap. Yeah, if the miners are making a big move, I'd say Agnico Eagle will go th straight through everything and basically 51.7 should be the first real resistance. After that, maybe 52, you know, 0.3. And after that, this level here, actually, I do see is a little significant. Look, you've got four candles, like the high of here, the low of there low there, the high there, the high there. So this one's probably a big one. And then you probably encounter the descending. So there you go. Um, I would just do this. These are the main two or three. Just mini levels. Which, you know, it could be wise to sell into them a little bit because seeing as how weak they've been, if they do make a strong move up, uh, if there's any retracement, you'd expect them to come back down again. But then they could really bounce and then finally break out of this. I do think we will break out of this. You know, gold, silver, gold has to go above 2100 and start to to run. And if that happens, I'm sorry. I don't care how strange it is that miners have been constantly underperforming. They just have to catch up because the amount of money some of these miners will make, especially the seniors, um, well, especially the juniors, the, you know, the media mid-tier ones also, but the seniors will just be such safe investments at that point that they would have to shoot up and take the GDX with them. Okay, <clears throat> Pan American Silver. This one obviously trading at levels, low levels. So I've got 13.4 roughly. Um, you know, we pretty much touched that, right? 13.5, it's the same thing. Mm, interesting how this middle candle was better. But anyway, I think Pan American Silver can... Consider itself at absolute lows here, 13.4. I do expect, you know, DXY and yields to drop a bit. So it should move up. What's the first level of resistance? It should be the high, <clears throat> well, let's say the open on uh, on Wednesday. So here, 14.3, let's say. After that, yeah, I mean, if we are continuing, I'd expect Pan America to really do some catching up. That took... That was down, you know, 6% on some of these days. After that, we got more of a move up. Mm. I don't think it's going much higher than that. This ascending, it really has been destroyed. I'm actually going to take it out. Let's just have the horizontals. And remember, this one here, this massive descending one, is not irrelevant. Let me just redraw it a little bit. You know, imagine we do start to move up. You're going to be testing it really soon. Once we're at, Next time we're at 17, we're not just at 17. We're testing the descending. So, yeah, let me just recount that. You've got 14.3, 14.6, you know, gap fill. Keeps going. You've got 15.6. Is this a level? A little bit of a level. 16, yeah, round number. And then, bam, 17. Those are the levels I'm watching on the way up for Pan America. On the way down, obviously 13.4. You could have a little fake flush and a nice hammer. So 13 really is the level. Let me just add this one in. And after that, wow, COVID lows. 10.5, probably 11. It's not going to go that easily below that. 12, it'll probably stop off at 12 too. It was 12 a level before. Resistance here. I can't believe we have to go back this far. COVID lows, let's say 11, because if you're waiting at 10.5 or 10.51, uh, you're not going to get that. This is going to be viciously bored up by anyone smart. So I don't know. We shouldn't really be looking at below 13, but what a gift. What an absolute gift. This is when you have to start looking at the items in your house and just pouring them off because that cash would be way better deployed here. 13, below 13, honestly, I can't see it going below 12, but massive support at 11. I'm going to say 11. I'm going to move this up because, because I don't see it going below 11. So that's Pan America. Um, Wheaton. Wheaton. So this one I bought back. I sold it on this move here, bought back here. I still had a third on the way down. 
no problems buying it back because it's dropped very little. Wheaton is doing what royalties do, and that's hold up very well in the face of calamity. I mean, the seniors you'd expect also to do very well, but as you've seen, they've been crushed. I mean, Newmont, Barrick, Pan America really crushed. Nico a little bit, but really, you'd expect the moves that you've seen in those, you'd expect from silver mid-tiers or juniors. But anyway, Wheaton doing quite well. Here you can see this level holding up very well. So we're holding pretty much 45 point, I don't know, seven. Uh, it was a resistance here, this line I've had in a while. I've, I've had in for a while. Um, so it's doing quite well. The ascending, I think I should start removing them. They've just been breached multiple occasions. So if we start to move up, I don't see much. I mean, honestly, I don't expect it to move up as much as the others, but I would say this is a very small level. It was a high here, it was support there. So once we close above that, 48, very small level. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with every one unit increment. I think this is a bit of a level, right? 49.5. And then it's interesting, 50, I don't really see as a level. 50 itself, I don't see. It's more 50.5 to 51. But anyway, I don't think we're going to get there unless there's a big move in the miners. So for me, the first stop is 47. Close above that. Yeah, a little bit 48. Go on. It's true. Just because of those two candles. And then up we go to 49.5. If we start to drop, down we go. I don't see anything till here, actually, because I think once you lose this and close below 45.5, let's say you're, I am in 45 a little bit. I think it's time to go here and start testing some gap zones. But if Wheaton is doing that, I mean, the sector is going lower and I don't see that. I don't see this happening actually this week, um, next week. Gap fill and then the lows down here. Okay, that'll do for Wheaton. Okay, Franco Nevada. This one has is actually stabilized higher than its recent lows. So the chart's a bit different for this one. It got crushed beforehand. That was some uh, Panama news. I think it lost its Panamanian operations so this drop hasn't been disastrous relatively speaking as the disaster already took place now it's higher lows it looks good it's a royalty streamer it's an absolute beast it's arguably one of the best of the best in my opinion so it's a new addition for me i think we will bounce in franco nevada along with all the others and I think you've got really no resistance until here because you're not going to have a small bounce in this one. It's quickly going to take out 110, which should be the first small level. And that's that should be taken care of on day one, maybe even intraday of day one. But I see nothing until 114. And once you close above 114, you're probably going to go a little higher than there. You're probably going to go towards, yeah, 120 to 122. Yeah, that's what I would say. So that's those are the levels on the way up. Uh, so I'm removing this one because honestly, if you start closing above 114, you're not going to just go to 116. On the way down, it's just one level. It's 102 because, I mean, if you do drop here, you'll probably start bouncing from here. I don't see this as a real level. I just see the last real low as the first level of support. After that, you're going to have very strong support. So around 96 You'd expect 100 to be a level, but I just, I don't see it, despite the, just the round number that it is. So yeah, 96, it should be this level here, but more importantly, you can, you're starting to coincide with this major ascending, major ascending. Uh, so if it goes below 96, it could be 90, below 96, it just depends how long it takes, you know. Um, but the generally speaking, it's the ascending, huge support. So on the way down, support is 102, and then I'm going to say 95, 96-ish. Metalla, this one is absolutely fascinating. One, sorry, $3 is just, I mean, it's a big round number, I get it, but every time it dips below, it's just held so well. Look, it, you know, it was testing this level long before the GDX started to get smashed in the face. And then the smashing starts to happen, and look at it, it just dips and it closes above. There was that one day, I don't know if it closed below three, I don't think it did. 
but it's just three dollars. It's just obvious support. And I'm surprised, I'm really surprised that the gap didn't fill. Um, given the smash that happened, you know, whilst we were at three. So incredible support at three. If we do drop, it's going to be this 290 gap fill. If we drop low, it's going to be this horizontal 270, roughly. On the way up, and I expect any bounce uh, to be reflected immediately in Metalla, because this one, you know, what doesn't go down will go up. So 320 is the first level. That's probably some intraday support. Um, I mean, you can see, right, it hit there. It opened there. It Sorry, it closed here, just below. It didn't close above. It opened the next day. So for me, 320 is a pretty obvious mini level. Once you close above that, I think you're going to go much higher. So 350, 360. So there you go. I'm leaving that in. Perfect. But it's another streamer. And honestly, it's actually outperformed Wheaton and Franco Nevada on the way down because it just hasn't gone down a single cent. So, but look where it is, you know, also already being destroyed long ago. So a very good candidate for a bounce plate. First Majestic, now we're entering the, the silvers, so we're done with the streamers. I added to this one, <clears throat> um, 62, 62, 63, yeah, it was 62, 63. Look at this hammer though, very nice, you know, closed really high compared to the, the day before. We also went lower than this one and closed higher than than this one, you know. So it's not an engulfer, not a bullish engulfer, but it's pretty close actually. So very nice reversal. It's been destroyed. You know, we're at the absolute lows. Look where we are. Look at this ascending from where was this? To, this is over a decade ago, over a decade ago, right? This is like 15 years ago kind of stuff. Huge ascending support, which is just intertwining right where we are. Then we have this corona low pretty close and we've got the lows from down here pretty close so between 420 and 460 you have huge you have three right one two and obviously the third one that i haven't drawn is the one from from recent times so this area is just a difference of 30 cents and it's massive support it should be and and to my to the best of my knowledge it is so look we're bouncing we're reversing already just a few cents above so this should bounce where is resistance? By the way, I'm not going to talk about anything below 420. I don't see it happening. And I I mean, it would probably be $3, but we're not going there yet. I don't see that happening. And if it starts to happen, uh, I'll cover it before it happens. On the way up, maybe, maybe this level here. It's difficult to say, 520. The next major resistance for me is this level, 540. Um, you could have a little 520. I'll just put some small line there just in case I'm switching to the chart just to know very quickly. But I see nothing. Yeah, $5 you'd expect so. But besides being a psychological number and besides this closing near five and this one opening below, which is something, I just, I'll put it in. But I really, in the grand scheme of things, you shouldn't be buying an absolute multi year you know decade plus low just to sell it up for you see look how ridiculous that looks so and i'm starting to take a more zoomed out strategic approach anyway i'll leave it in but i don't see any major support until major resistance until really 540 to be honest uh and then obviously you start to encounter the other horizontals up here the high and then the gap fill and then and then yeah obviously 657 we need to crack seven that's really six seven dollars would really do it that's a squeeze that's the low is in you're never going to see it again kind of move right ex um no sorry fortuna we want to keep the same chronology structure right fortuna this one really underperformed on that friday um it had Bad news, was it bad news? It was interesting. I listened to Peter Schiff the other day and he bought Barrett Gold and Fortuna on the drops. And so did I. <clears throat> so I bought Barrett Gold a little too much, like I said, right? 10 times what I wanted to do. So that's a bit too much. But at least that was after the drop. Um, and I bought Fortuna and I bought First Majestic. I nibbled on Curl Darlene. I'll get there. What else? Pan American Silver. Uh, Agnico. I actually nibbled on basically all of the good ones. So anyway, Fortuna, though, kept on going down. I didn't expect that. So it was a very bad close, but at least it closed above three. 
Uh, I've got this as a level. Now it's a rough level. You can see why it was. It's not the best though, is it? It's like support there and there, resistance a little bit, but resistance was also, I feel like 310 was more of a level in the past, but actually in the last two days, I haven't been a level at all. So is it three? I mean, it's a big round number, but if we start to go below three, that would not be good. Um, that would be, that would indicate the miners are still going down or maybe it's just Fortuna because it was such a bad close. But I do see 280 as a level. You know, look at this. I mean, every 10 cents is kind of a level. You know, you've got this here, got these little candles here. But otherwise, during all of this sideways action, it didn't really, it wasn't really a level, was it? 290. But here, you know, it hits it there, hits it there, a little bit there, definitely there. So that's why I'm saying 280 is more of a level than 290. And also, it's like the midpoint between the absolute. And more obvious low here, right? 260 is a very obvious low. Um, so this is also a convenient midpoint. So I'll leave that one in, but very ugly, <clears throat> very ugly close. <clears throat> I mean, look, all the other ones are reversing, looking like a bounce is imminent. This one, you know, imagine the miners are up. I can't imagine this one having a beautiful candle. I feel like it's going to flush three and then maybe close above three. Maybe has a good candle, but you know all the others will have done more of a move up. So this would be up like two percent. The other ones are up five or something or six. So, but look, this should end up being an area where it can curl from. So it's allowed to go below. Hopefully, close above three and then curl on the way up. <clears throat> I would just say that three forty before the gap fill, then three fifty big round number prior support and the gap fill. So three fifty definite resistance maybe 340 just beforehand. And after that, I mean, it's going to be very hard to go through all of that, especially after bad news. It's bad news, isn't it? I think it is. Um, <clears throat> so it's going to be very difficult, but 390. So those are the levels I'm looking at. EXK. Jesus Christ. Well, this one actually uh, that I've detested uh, consecutively. I mean, look at this. This one has not gone down as much as the others. <laughs> It's a sign of a stock that's just, just been completely oversold relentlessly and there's just not enough sellers anymore. So a bit like, well, not like Metalla, but it's really outperformed on this drop. <laughs> and it's just been the most underperforming stock ever. So that's a nice change. I mean, look, how much has it gone down? Really from 180 to one, yeah, okay. That, basically to 170, right? It's dipped its toes below, but... Basically from 180, not even, just below 180 to 170. So just not even 10 cents, but about, that, about 10 cents of a drop. So now we've got a bit of a hammer. And honestly, it could pop to, to 190. Um, this used to be rough support. It's not really now, actually. For me, resistance is the descending. That's it. There are no horizontals. It's just the descending. Very clear resistance. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfect, realistically speaking. So... Nice hammer, you know, due for a bounce, will bounce with the sector, and it'll probably encounter resistance just at 190 or 189 or something. That's what I think. If you close above the descending, I don't see two as resistance at all. A bit like before, I see the next resistance is 230, and then everything else you see, maybe this descending will come into play before this one here, right? So 230, and then this level here. So let's close above this descending. Then let's see about 2.30, and then let's see about this. And to be honest, if we get all the way up there, there's probably a huge rally taking place because the XK <laughs> never rallies. On the way down, honestly, it's it's kind of proved that it's not going down too much, but let's say the whole sector flushes for whatever reason. I don't see much support until you see this little gap here. I don't want to... This little gap here, 150 maybe... Because one, you know, 140 where I've got it here, 135, it's quite far away. I mean, that's a huge drop. Doesn't look like much on the chart, but from 170 to 135, that is, you know, 20% drop for something that's already dropped and has kind of stopped going down. That's maybe asking too much. So maybe 150. Okay, EXK is done. Next one is Coeur d'Arlen, my favorite. Normally my favorite for the way up and for the way down is... <clears throat> my least favorite, but this one is actually doing okay. I mean, all things considered, 
it's dropped, definitely dropped. I mean, how much is that of a drop? That's from the high to the low, 30%. That's okay for Kerr, given what's happening. You got Barrack down 12% in one day. That's that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're holding this level here. Nice little level, 260. You can see it was resistance here. Not so much here, but yeah. Well, anyway, right now it definitely is. You can see the tails, it's closing just above it. If we do keep dropping, this one's hard to call the levels on the way down, but 240 is what I used to have. I pretty much agree with that. And then, yeah, $2 or just above $2. I doubt it will go to two, so I'll I'll leave it here. So yeah, I still agree with those. Now, I do think we're going to have a bounce. I think Kurt Darlen will be one of the best uh, best miners to, miners to own, one of the best miners to own for that bounce. And the next resistance on the way up that I can see clearly, I mean, there's a mini gap here, but trust me, when this moves, it won't just go to, it won't go from 260 to 270. It'll be <laughs> more likely to go to $3. I didn't know that was three dollars. It's just the obvious next resistance, and it's a nice round number. So three dollars, and after that, yes, gap fill three twenty, and after that, yes, three fifty, three seventy. Okay, there you go. That's curl. Honestly, it's surprised me. It hasn't gone down as much as I thought it would uh, recently. I mean, this drop here actually was worse than I thought, but then uh, it started to stabilize, but the sector flushed. So. Quite nicely. I think I'm looking forward to seeing how much that one goes up when we do bounce. Okay, Discovery Silver. Yeah, nice. That's at support, roughly 50 cents. Big round number. Also, obvious support from the last drop over here. I just want to, I did actually flush below it and close below it. I didn't actually notice that, but $50 roughly is a range, is a level. Now, if we go lower, yeah, I remember this, 45, 40, nice and simple. I just never add that 45, but I don't see us going to 40 at all, at all. Um, and so if we do go low, I see 45. Now, on the way up, <clears throat> I'm just wondering whether this little 54 is a level, very small level, very small. So the line will be very short there. Now, otherwise, we keep going up. Yes, 62. I don't see 60 as a level. That's interesting. I see 60. Actually, 61.5, 62. And then this one here, 65. Yes. Okay, I agree with that. It's good to leave your, your last lines in. It saves you a lot of time. So there you go. Those are the horizontal levels. Uh, Next one is... I know. I'll check that one later. Okay, next one is... Ah, uh, yes, because I actually... I forgot to mention this, but I liquidated some juniors, but I never mentioned the juniors because they're worth very little and I don't like to cover juniors. Not many people have the same juniors. Um, I will mention, I'll mention that now. So I had four juniors. They were called <coughs> Termalina, Renegade, uh, Reina, and Silver Tier 1, Silver Light, Silver Tier or something, for what it was actually. Um, they made a podcast just the day after I got rid of it. Actually, that was Silver Tear or something. Silver Tiger, Jesus. Anyway, those four, um, very little in it, like five hundred dollars, one thousand, very small amount. And honestly, they were like down fifty percent or more, and it was just old baggage. Okay, Silver Tiger, I held, I I bought really recently, like a few months ago, but still already down fifty percent. But the others I had for over a year. And I was just thinking, look, these seniors have are down, you know, 20% in the last couple of days in some cases. And these junior trashes that, you know, I always thought would bounce but never did, they weren't even down that much. They were down like 2%, 3%. And there was a bit of liquidity in them. They were like, I could hit the bid and it wasn't that far away from, from where the offer was, the ask. So I thought, why don't I just get rid of these juniors then? <clears throat> to be honest, when they do go up, they go up 20% and then they just fade and go even lower. And why don't I just put that cash into a senior that's been destroyed? So relatively speaking, it was like, it was a good deal. It was selling something that hasn't gone down that much, selling something bad that hasn't gone down that much to buy something amazing that's gone down more. So, you know, and you can do those kind of charts even here on TradingView, for example, you could say, um, let's take one of them, for example. <laughs> um, 
RSN. So rain is silver. RSN VF. RSN VF slash let's do um right Pan American silver. So the last couple of days you can see rain has gone up versus Pan American silver. So that's one thing I did. I mean, you know, I I liquidated the position and bought I bought several things, but you know that's one way of judging. I mean, you can do it anyway. You can see rain has gone down three percent. Pan American has gone down seven, and you know you know you're outperforming, but it's just something useful sometimes. Anyway, not to get too sidetracked off topic. The next one I wanted to check was Aris Mining. <laughs> now, this one has outperformed for a long time. It popped before everything else did. It's really done very, very well. It's a great company. It was forced to come down the last few days. Now, I wanted to buy it, but I was buying the others. Um. I think this one wants to break out, really. It's just the market, the sector forced it lower. I also see a lot of these other ones, you know, Pan America, I've shown you them already. They're absolutely destroyed to their absolute lows. So although this one is really good, really good bounce play and probably will go up, maybe even more than these. So it probably still is worth buying. I just can't buy something that isn't even at a really strong support. I mean, this is, this is going to support, this is... This is going to act as support. We are going to bounce if the market bounces, but I just thought the others were a better buy, basically. So, yeah, it's uh, but anyway, it's a very good stock. It's a very good company. It's got extremely good upside. If the mark, if the sector starts to bounce and we start to see Aris Mining close above three seventy, we're going to go straight to four eighty. These are huge moves, by the way. I mean, not from where we are, but just imagine a move from three seventy all the way up here. That's thirty percent, and that's no resistance and there's more upside right keep zooming out uh this is a bit deceptive but you know we do have more upside in rs mining even after we reach 480 so this has huge upside but i just you know the others they're more senior they're more recognized and they were more destroyed so i bought those instead of this one but if we do keep going down this is one that i will nibble to to be honest i did want to nibble it towards the end of the day but i just I don't want to say I ran out of time. I don't like to buy stocks in the last 10 minutes. It's just a little crazy, but yeah. So support for me, where we are is support. It can go a little lower. You know, if you go to 270-ish, you can see that's like a breakout zone. So 270 to 290, the whole area is one area of support. And it's all a good zone to buy because this will go up. If we keep going lower, 250, I do not see it going down here. If it does, what a steal. If it goes lower, 230, anywhere below 250 is just a buy. Now, on the way up, resistance, 310. Funny enough, not three. 310, you can see here, it was here, support, support, support. So 310, and after that, honestly, 340. After that, we're going to check out MAG, silver. This one is tight competition with EXK for being the worst stocks I own. Now, MAG did go lower than EXK, underperformed. It did flush basically from 10. Oh, no, not from 10. Let's say from when did the flush really happen? From 970-ish down to 9, even went below 9. Um, Let's check the levels below that. I mean, I haven't actually drawn any, I guess. I would be watching GDX and, and gold and silver, but I guess the real next level of support is the low from down here let's say 730 because eight besides being a round number i don't see much if we look at this let's look at this zone you know eight not really yeah you know the low of these candles where it curled and moved up from so let's say 730 ish we're not going to go there i don't care how bad things get that's just a bit too much um now on the way up yeah so prior this is not a good, yeah, this level here. So 960, and it's hard to call, 970-ish, give or take 10 cents. 970, give or take 10 cents. Um, yeah, let me get rid of that. There you go. I mean, you can see it's all kind of between 10 and 960, bit of a level. Um, I'm just wondering where we have, a little descending. 
Uh, I don't like this stock anyway. But anyway, 960, 70 after that. Oh, it's hard to call. 10. This support, that resistance, big round number. Okay, 960 and 10. I'll just say this is really zoomed in stuff. After that, really nothing until 1120, maybe 11 at this point, seeing how things are. And then after that, this absolute 1220. For me, this area, this 1220 is a big resistance because that was the last move up and we've gone lower since then. And to be honest, by the time we get there, we're encountering the descending. So for me, 1220 is huge resistance. Okay, Max Silver, now GLGDF, go gold. This one is not doing as bad as the others. So we've hit, for me, what is clear support, 84. Five ish is that right? 85, yeah, 85, 86, uh, which is all right, right? We hit support there, there, back here, and here we are once again. Here, nice candle, right? Compared to the other two, very nice, ready to rock up to, I don't know, actually, one just below one dollar. Like, honestly, if you're here around 95, you're probably going to squeeze through one. I don't see any resistance until 113, 112, 113. But that's huge resistance. Not only are you going to encounter the descending, which is actually before 112. So let's say one 111, right? Between 111 and 113. Um, you should have this descending and the horizontal. So very strong resistance around here. And that's the only one. Once you close above that, once you close above 114, just to be sure, you go straight to 130. On the way down, you got this one here at 76. After that. Yeah, this, as you can see here, it was resistance. Bam, we've just screamed up. So let's call that 68. Okay, SBSW, Siban is still water. This one here I bought in the low fours or mid fours, actually mid fours. I forgot actually, roughly here, which is where we are now. Maybe we're trading a little below. And then it popped all the way up here. I think I bought back here. My average, I believe, is 470, 480. We're trading around 450 at the moment. Anyway, right now, I see support as pretty much 440, right? You can see this level here. Look at these candles. Also, where we bounced the last three days. Now, on if we are to go low, I think the low we put in at four is the last and next level of support. Also happens to coincide with the descending, which definitely is a level because it definitely counted on the breakout. Look at that. The day we broke out, we gapped up and we just squeezed up. And yeah, so if we come back down, it's going to coincide with the horizontal. So $4 definite level if we lose 440. On the way up, I guess this recent high would be a small level. Maybe I'll put it as a midway point. We've got a bit of a gap here. So, gap here. so between 470 and 475 or whatever. Let's just say 470-ish is a level. We take this out. We can... Probably go to five bucks. That was a level, bit of a level of support here. Um, and also will be this ascending uh, resistance because of this ascending. So let's go through it. It's $4, 440, 470, five. And if we keep going, it's probably going to be 540. And then finally, 580 there you go but remember zoom out in the grand scheme of things this thing here is pretty much <clears throat> at a bottom let's say and there's a lot of upside but who knows you can always visit further lows and you've got this covid low of 350 let's say i mean if the metals keep going down and this one is you know this one's not just gold and palladium it's this platinum there's lots of different i think it's rhodium Quite a few different metals involved in this one. This is more of a battery play, actually. Now, that does it for my stocks. Let's go through subscriber stocks, starting with El Dorado. Mm, this one's held up very well, actually. You can see it's just bouncing between these two ranges, 13.5 and, and 11.8. So, actually, it's in the middle of the range. I wouldn't say it's at a support. I wouldn't say there's... I mean, you could say 13 is a bit of a resistance, but really... 13.5 should be stronger resistance than 13. If we go higher than that, then we're making new highs that we haven't made in weeks. And that's very impressive, especially compared to other stocks. And then you've got basically 
which is your line in the sand, because after that, you're going up towards 19. I remember that. If we are to start closing below 1180, maybe 1170 to be sure, and it's hard to tell, but if the whole sector is really flushing, this may go and visit 1030. But this stock has been really performing well for a long time, ever since this move up. It's been outperforming on the way up and outperforming on the way down. So very nice. Next one is Hecla. <coughs> now, Hecla has been finding support at four bucks, just below four, let's say. It's been closing at four, so that's nice. But absolute support at 390. If it goes lower, you've got this very clear 360 level. And below that, about 340, I guess. But I don't think we'll visit that. I just have a feeling we're not going to go much lower next week in the miners. But what, <laughs> sorry, one thing I haven't really considered is what happens to the miners if the markets can't go down because, you know, markets have made new all time highs. Miners haven't really gone anywhere except down, but that's really because of the DXY and yields. But what if markets start to flush? What happens to miners? You do not want miners to go down with that. But that's a separate topic. So 360, 390 slash four on the way up. Yeah, 440. It's always been hard, this one. I'd say 440. If we keep going up, then I suppose before you get to the gap, you've got these two tails up here. Let's call it 450. Okay, 450. Yeah, so 440, 450, 470, just little levels here. I mean, if you're really wanting to get, if you bought down here and you want to get out, I, you know, machine gun my way out in these three levels here. But of course, the strongest resistance will be five or actually five ten. So that's what I see in Heckler. Heckler is the one stock I want to own that I don't. I've really, I think I own all the stocks that I've wanted to. I mean, there are some other stocks. I don't usually go through it. The ones over here, Kinross, Harmony, Anglo Gold, Goldfields, I am Gold, uh, Nova Gold, Equinox. These are the like the other seniors that I like, but they're I don't know they they just haven't gone down enough or they're not at a level. Um, or maybe I just haven't reviewed them that much. I am actually considering just adding these to the list of miners that I review during my weekly portfolio review because then I cover everything that I'm interested in too. And therefore, I don't need to do any extra homework after this video. But anyway, that's something for me to consider on my own. So after Heckler and this, you know, good time to get in now. It's a good starter position. But I was I was thinking of getting rid of EXK or MAG, swapping those for Heckler. Um, but I prefer to get out of those on the way up rather than on the way down. So maybe I should be adding the Heckler now in anticipation of a move up and then selling EXK and MAG when I think that move up is done. So, you know, legging into Heckler and then later legging out of EXK and or MAG. Something for me to consider. Okay, after Heckler, you have B2 Gold. This one has been underperforming for some time. It's flushed this support hasn't gone down too much you know a lot of these that have been underperforming they haven't gone down too much at least there's that one positive takeaway for me it's not really at a level at all uh it's just the gdx is curling so but remember the gdx the gdxj and all the other etfs they've you know their friday candle was better than the last two wednesday and thursday that's not the case here so if we do go low i think it will go to 280 that's a very clear obvious support level if we lose that then this 250 or just below 250 should be very strong support very strong but this long-term ascending also you know you're coinciding with some covid lows so this should be really strong support and i actually read an article on this recently um suggesting it would be very good long term so i actually might be interested in buying this if we do flush to new lows but then again what are the other miners doing right you may have some senior stocks that are even more attractive <laughs> right, SSRM. Wow, I didn't see this. So this one closed at an absolute level, as far as I can tell. Okay, it's not the mother of all supports, but look at this. This is the second lowest daily level we visited during the COVID period. So 980. I'm surprised it's gone down more. I know the sector's gotten crushed, but this one was already underperforming. So I saw this sort of support here at 1020, I guess it was. And look at that close, that hammer close was good. But yeah, the sector just went down, right? Newmont, Barrick all got smashed. So the whole sector went down. 
gold went down. I think this just had to go down. You're not allowed to go up when the sector's getting crushed. So now we are now to an even better support. 980 is better than 1020, although there's not much difference when you zoom out, it's the same thing. But to me, we're at support. Um, it's a shame it closed red, though, you know, it had a red day when the others were kind of unchanged green. So there is that to consider. Next level down is $9. That's that's almost 10% away, though. I don't know if we'll get there, but that's the COVID low. That's a very strong level. And this has been crushed. And this is not exactly a, a junior stock. This is a well-established uh, senior, in my opinion. So interesting, quite attractive down here, I must admit. Um. So yeah, nine eighty nine dollars after that, you got this $8 zone. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Just below eight. I don't think we'll be crashing through the COVID lows that easily though. So I think it's very attractive where it is, to be honest, at least for a bounce. Resistance is this descending. It's a bit like EXK. The descending is the resistance. So imagine we start to go up. That will probably be 10.50 by the time we get there. If you're able to close above it, 12 definitely 1250 between 12 and 13 i'd expect serious resistance depends how long it takes though you know because you have this major descending so quite a few little resistance points on the way up first one is this ascending this descending then i would say this horizontal is the clearest one and then you've got the prior support to be resistance and the major descending so lots of resistance that you can use to 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 sell you know in front of um I believe that's it. So let me know if you have any other stocks you want me to cover. Me personally, I actually am considering covering all of these. So Kinross, Harmony, Anglo, Goldfields, Iron Gold, Nova Gold, Equinox, maybe some of the others. So let me know because I, I intend to rearrange this list a little bit. So anyway, I hope that's useful. It was not the best week at all, um, but it's an opportunity to get out of some crappy ones and add to some good ones maybe. you know. And if you look at it the way I did, when I was mentioning the juniors, getting out of some crappy juniors and adding to some very good seniors that went down less. That's that, you know, that's that's one decent way of rearranging your portfolio, which for the long term could be very, very profitable. Um, so anyway, let me know how you felt about that. Like it, share, subscribe, and all that stuff. And sorry for the background, I have some uh, family movement. Enjoy your weekend.